Good afternoon guys. Here we are in Nithsdale at the head of the Cairnhead Valley. We're on the trail of the Striding Arches which are a series of art installations by the landscape artist Andy Goldsworthy and if my memory serves me well the uh, art is representing the movement of Scottish people over the last 200 years to America, Canada, New Zealand, Australia basically uh, moving for a better life and the first um, installation that we're going to have a look at is called The Buyer and it's uh, at the head of the valley in what looks like an old shepherd's cottage stroke buyer house. So I'll just give you a quick, quick look round but obviously we've brought the weather with us. That's the remnants of the old farm cottage at the head of the valley here. I'll just give you a pan round. That's the buyer which we'll be looking at in a minute, just there beyond that tree. But again, it's all forested. It's quite mild, seven and a half, eight degrees. But as we come through Dumfries, it was 11 and a half degrees and wall to wall sunshine. It was that bright in the vehicle that we had to wear sunglasses. But, like I say, we brought the weather with us. A little cot. Wind is all put out. So yeah, we're going to be underneath the arches. Conrich Cairnhead 1804 1547 So it's Conrich 1547 Conrich 1600 Conrig 1804 and Cairnhead 1911 sandstone name plaques either side of the entrance to what's known as the Bayer 1547 1600 yeah so this is known as the Bayer this installation and here we are at the first of the arches which will make a, a good shelter to be underneath actually but the rain's very fine but as you can see it goes in one of the buyer windows. Very impressive. As Diane taking it all in. Very nice. So I think we can get the entry into the building and see the other end of the arch. Yeah, now we can enter here. Oh. 
Yeah, there we are. The other end of the edge. Somebody's been stashing dry firewood here. It's a pallet. Very impressive. I believe there's 31 slabs that make up the arch, and each arch weighs 27 tons. Four metres high with a span of seven metres, I think it was seven. And that's the other open window. Yeah, it's a lovely building. Not that it'll serve any purpose now, but this is just like I say, it was a buyer. It's got the old cobbled flooring in. Yeah, it's just starting to clear up now. And that, in the distance, Diane's just pointing out another one of the arches. From any one arch, it's suggested that you can see two of the others and there are four in total. And that arch that we can see on that clear patch of summit up there at the top is, um, I can't remember the name of that one. Cold Hill's the one at this end. I'll come back to you on that. I can't remember that one, just off the top of my head. But yeah, this one's the buyer. I, I do recollect that and obvious, for obvious reasons. But to be honest with you, there'll be no to stop you pitching on here. And it's <laughs> it's good, good. It's been like a pen of some sort. Of, well, an enclosure for sheep, I would imagine, or beast. Yeah, that's the first of the arches. I don't think we'll be taking in all four, but I'd like to think we could visit two, because we're just uh, going to be doing an overnighter tonight. Brought the terrain over with us, so if it does get a bit uh, blustery on the tops. We haven't made our mind up where we're going to camp yet, whether we're going to camp low down, walk up tomorrow, or... Uh, get up there this afternoon because I think it's about what at 3.30 now should it take us maybe a couple of hours to get up to the first of the arches so we'll, we'll make our minds up when we've had a, a little explore yeah even round all these slabs here there's uh, Arthur Bell Shepherd 1891 Samuel McCall 1871 Elizabeth McVitie, 1851 John Ferguson, 1851 James Barber, 1824 oh, I can't make that known Archibald Wallace 1821 William Riddle 1790 Matthew Ferguson 1507 Wow, so there is a bit of history up here but Yeah, it's just starting to lift now to be honest, so I think we uh, might just risk it and get ourselves up onto the summit of one of them anyway but there's one at the head of the valley as you come in there as you start one on this hill here and up the valley head there's one at the top which is I think access to them is off part of the southern upland way But it's a seven mile, basically like a lane, farm lane, from Money Hive to 
to get into the valley head here at Cairn Head and this building looks like it's just been left to rack and ruin make a brilliant boffy but Yeah. That's us looking down the valley and the hill there has got an arch on it and that one's Beale Hill. But uh, that's just giving you the perspective of what uh, type of ground we're on. We're actually walking up a forest trail, which uh, on our maps it doesn't show it, so th this uh, must have been put in since the maps were printed. But we found that it's the easiest way to uh, ascend to where we want to be. So when we get up here to the top, to the crossroads, we'll come to the cr uh, crossroads with the Southern Upland Way and then we'll take off to the right and up onto Colt Hill. Well I'm afraid it's going to have to be Plan B. We've um, been up to where our destination was on Colt Hill and um, the forestry guys are up there felling so it's too too risky to pass by them big machines because they can't see you them guys when they're up in them with trees flying everywhere and what have you so we're now on route to what we were going to do tomorrow with deer sacks because we've got little deer sacks in our bergens we we're going to stash our bergens in the bottom there and dash up here with our deer sacks on and take this arch in in the morning but uh, not to be so we've had to uh, reroute and change our plans which has, it's added another two miles onto our walk over this open moorland but we're actually on the um, southern upland way now which is that's the marker for the southern upland way and our uh, the arch we're going to go to Ben Brack is over there's a summit there but I know there's a false summit because you can see that on the other side there's a bit of a valley so we're actually foresting over there as well so we wouldn't have been able to take a direct route from where we parked the vehicle so just one of them things so we're back up and at it with that in front of us quite blustery up here on the tops but we've got quite good views all around atmospheric and very windy but time now coming on for 5.30 we had intended to be pitched and up and running for now but I think we've got about another what, half a mile to go and we'll be at our destination so we'll get our fingers out we've made it here we are just approaching the trig point on Ben Brack the forestry guys I've got that wrapped up so we've, we thought we'd better come away from that so this is the arch on Ben Brack
out the other way looking up country so we're in Nithsdale now nice and weathered this one yeah one for the night so what we'll do we'll get ourselves uh, sorted and dried off and changed and what have you That's us pitched. I think it's about 6.30 now. We uh, had a good slog to get up here across that boggy peaty moorland, but hey, what views from here. Just got pitched in time before he threw a shower, but uh, it looks like it's blown through now, so that's not so bad. We're getting established anyway, it's finding out where everything's at and what have you. We're just about to put the kettle on, so it's took us how long? About two hours something like that two and a half hours something like that to get up here because like I say plan A was knocked on the head because of the uh, fellas who were felling trees but never mind this is a lovely view we can still see the other two arches from here there on that little mound in the distance is one of them is the third one so whichever one you're at you can always see two of the others but we've got ourselves a cracking little pitch right underneath the arch <laughs> the clouds are really flashing across and the windmills as you can see down there the wind turbines they're really spinning around but I don't think anybody will be coming up here to bother us this evening so we'll get a brew on I brought the jet boil this, uh, this evening just for convenience really, and the kit that I'm carrying is heavy enough. guys we've had a mixed bag through the night we've had wind rain clear skies it's just been totally uh, well full Monty really but here we are just camped in below the striding arch on Ben Brack and uh, we've had a nice sunrise but we've got a lot of clag and low cloud floating about just had some breakfast we've had one of those mountain house eggs ham and potato meals for breakfast that was quite nice filled the gap so now we're just looking at uh, getting packed up and uh, having a relaxing ramble back out but I'll give you the look out of our tent this morning at what we're looking at that's what we're looking out onto this morning just above the valley of Cairn Head
I was had to waking up two folks. The sound of the skylarks. Beautiful. Yeah. Lovely morning. A little bit of heat in the sun now. Yeah, we had a, like I say, we had a mixed bag last night. It was uh, rain which wasn't forecast. I think you've just got to expect the worst and be prepared. Quite nice though, soothing when you're in a tent. You're nice and warm in your sleeping bag and you can hear the rain hammering on the fly sheet. Diane's just packing up the air beds and things, so I'll give you a little look around. You can hear grouse and skylark. Got a wind farm down there on the hillside. You can hear wood, woodsmen working away in the valley opposite. Well guys, that's us just breaking camp, absolutely wonderful day now, the sun's up, that's where we were pitched last night, just a bit of flat grass, no trace, usual, you know the drill, yeah, nothing. The sun has got his hat on, yeah, there's the bags all packed up, ready to roll. There's Diane just taking a few last minute photos. Absolutely splendid these arches though. Wonderful. Right down the centre of shot there with the snow on its flanks. The Merry. there with the clag on is the Cairns Moor of Carsfern. A lot of wind farms in the area but it's lovely to hear the skylark singing. I think it's telling us to get out of here. There's been pairs of them darting about, bobbing about, courting. Breeding season of course. But other than the sound of skylarks, nothing. Absolutely wonderful.
that's our route out takes us up over the top and back to the uh, finger posts that direct you onto the southern upland way but yeah splendid deer quite boggy underfoot but uh, still see the, the faint track of a path I think the farmer must use it with his um, quad bike yeah you do need a nice waterproof boot and gaiters up here other than that your trousers and feet will be absolutely sodden there we are looking out under the Galloway Hills beautiful scenery clouds shadows on the hillsides that summit there was going to be our intended camp last night but as you can see, you maybe can't see, but uh, you probably hear the uh, forestry machinery is clearing this plantation out here. So we thought it wasn't uh, sensible to go up there. And when we come back this morning, he hasn't half cleared some wood out. So it, it, we made the right move not to go up there because the ones up this perimeter here they've all been felled the arch up at Colts Hill is um, inaccessible due to the logging and the Bayard Arch where we set off on our walk is where we're going to head to now that's a two and a half mile walk from here and that is Ben Brack Arch which we did the overnighter on last night but yeah that's the uh, signage hard hats and etc etc no authorised access etc so sadly we won't be able to uh, go on to Cold Hill this is one of the reasons that we've had to change our plans the, uh, the whole place is uh, busy with forestry workers but some bit of kit this these big uh, tracks metal John Deere that's for bringing the wood down off the hillside and here we have the uh, big harvester that fells the trees and preps them and cuts them to length takes all the branches off and what have you that's the the jaws there amazing it's all just hydraulic pipes and what have you but a massive bit of kit very impressive but that's uh, sadly why we've had to change our plans but we have got a little surprise up our sleeves we're going to visit another of Andy Goldsworthy's sculptures which isn't in this valley but it's on our way to what do they call the town Diane? Thornhill, Thornhill. on our way out of the valley and back to, up from Money Ive to the main road to Dumfries we go through uh, Thornhill well Andy Goldsworthy has another sculpture there it's like an egg shape so with it being like a, an Easter camp we thought we'd introduce an egg sculpture but if you could smell if there was smelly vision on this camera 
that is absolutely if you could bottle that and sell it it is beautiful freshly sown pine beautiful fresh oh it's stunning Diane's been moaning that I didn't buy her an Easter egg well here it is it's nice we sat in the middle of a farmer's field no information on it or out it no plaque it doesn't I don't know what it's supposed to represent or it's a lovely uh Bit of work though. Yeah, happy Easter, folks. From Gam for a Ratch. There she is, chomping away. She took a bit off bottom, look. <laughs>